I just built this AI chatbot that has a custom knowledge base. In just a few minutes in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it and give you the exact code so you can steal it and use it in your own projects. The problem of adding a custom knowledge base factor to your LLM applications is one of hot debate right now. I'm gonna be walking you through step by step how I've been able to do this and how you can do it too. And at the end, I'm gonna be giving you all of my code so that you can copy and paste it and apply it to your own businesses or even create your own business off the back of these as well. Now, what's the point of creating a custom knowledge chatbot anyway? These large language models like GPT-3 are limited in their knowledge up until about 2021. Now, a lot of the simple applications for LLMs are being snapped up, which use just a GPT-3 API to do a simple function. The ability to put additional information into a LLM and query it about that information opens up enormous possibilities for creating new businesses. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I've been using this to do the same. Now, an existing example of this that I want to show you is called chatpdf.com. Now, this website takes a PDF, scrapes all the information off it, indexes all that information, and then allows you to chat to a chatbot about the content in that PDF. What I'm going to be showing you goes beyond just PDFs, but I wanna show you quickly on screen here, the kind of result that we're looking to get and the ability to take an external information and then talk about that information, which is what we're after in this video. So I've been able to search on this site for a PDF. This time I've gone with something that wouldn't have been included in the original GPT-3 training. So I've gone with Formula One 2022 regulations. So we can now talk to this and it shouldn't know anything about it unless it's come from the PDF we've chosen. What are the regulations regarding the usage of power units in Formula One cars in 2022? Now, as you can see on screen here, we've been able to talk to the chatbot about the specific content of this document. According to page 82, da, 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 da. what else does it say on page 82? Please summarize it. And it's able to tell me page 82, X, Y, Z. So this is the kind of functionality and chatbot that we're going to achieve in this video, but I'm gonna give you a ton of different ways to onboard different forms of data. You're not just gonna be able to onboard PDFs, but transcripts, Discord messages, Google Calendar, all sorts of information that you can onboard into these models so that you can use it in a chatbot style interface. Now enough talking about it, let's get onto the keys and I'll show you exactly how you can do this with some simple Python code. So what we're going to be using in this video is called Llama Index. I'm going to be leaving links to the documentation in the description, but for now, I'm just going to run you through the basic usage pattern so you can understand what it's doing. And then we can start getting into some interesting use cases for it. So to start with, we just need to import OS and then set our OpenAI key. First thing you need to do is to take all of your data using one of their data loaders and load it into a documents variable for later use. Now to show you this in action in a very simple way, I've taken a article by Meta AI discussing the release of Llama, their large language model, which I've just put into a, a raw text file and saved to a data folder, which I'm gonna be calling in a second. The reason I went for an article on Llama is to show you that it really is taking information that it did not know and being able to tell you about it. This is because Llama was released very recently and therefore there's no way that GPT-3 is able to understand what Llama is. So to do this, I need to import from Llama index their simple directory reader. And then I need to call it with this function here and reference where I'm pulling it from, which is just this data folder here. Then I'm going to load this data into my documents variable. I need to use those documents to create an index. So it's very simple to do. You just need to use from llama index, import GPT simple vector index, and then call this function here. What this is gonna do is take your documents and create an index out of it that you can then query for answers. So I run this, it creates the index, and then I'm able to do this very simple command of index.query and then enter the question I want to ask it, and then it's gonna print out the response. What do you think of Facebook's Llama is my question. And then the answer is, I think Facebook's Llama is a great step forward in democratizing da, 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 da. So it knows what we're talking about. So now that you understand the basic usage pattern of Llama index, which is to load some data in, create the index, and then query that index, we can now go on to some more advanced topics of how we can adjust the models that we use in order to get different results and more specific results. So we can jump onto this now. Now the index we use in the first example is a GPT simple index. And so now I'm gonna be showing you how you can adjust the model that you use and adjust the settings within that model so that you can get different kinds of outputs. So this could be easily done by importing an LLM predictor. And we can set up that LLM predictor with our LLM and determine the temperature, which I'm sure you're familiar with if you've watched my recent videos, and we can change the model name. So this essentially gives us more flexibility in terms of what we want to be using as part of this indexing engine and the kind of results we wanna get by specifying the temperature, the model, the frequency penalty, et cetera, as you're used to working with other models. 
Once we've set up the LLM predictor, all we need to do is create a prompt helper and give it a few parameters such as the max input size. This basically ensures that you're not going to run into any issues when you're querying it because of this custom LLM that you're using. So once we have the prompt helper, you can just copy and paste all the stuff. I know it looks a little bit complex, but I promise you it's pretty basic stuff. Just copy and paste it over and that prompt helper will be set up already for you. Now you need to set up the same class of a GPT simple vector index, but this time I'm going to include the LLM predictor which is going to take in the information we gave it here, which is the adjusted temperature and a changed model from the original. That gives us the custom LLM index variable here, which we can then query with our own questions. So using that same pattern, we can now go index.query and then ask it our question. As you can see, we got a completely different answer from this TextDaVinci 002 model to the original, which I believe would be TextDaVinci 003. So by changing these models around, you can get it to do different things for you. Now we can get on to the good stuff, which is showing you how you can use different Llama index loaders to load different information into these and get really cool results out of it. Now, in order to give you an example of the huge range of data types that Llama index allows you to get on board, I'm gonna head over to the documentation here, and then we can head to what they call Llama Hub. Now, once you're on Llama Hub, you can see all these different data loading methods. This is the real magic of Llama Index, and I'm going to be making a ton of videos on all these different data connector types so that you guys can see these in action. So, for example, here we can click on Google Calendar, and this is going to read your Google Calendar, passes the relevant information into documents, then allows you to query the index and ask about what's coming up on your calendar. Now, if that doesn't set off light bulbs in your head, I don't know what will. And the list goes on. Google Docs Loader. You can easily load Google Docs information into your models. You have Notion loaders, you have Slack loaders, Twitter loaders, WhatsApp loaders, all sorts of things. But what we're looking at here is the Wikipedia loader. Here you can see all we need to do is import the download loader and call the Wikipedia reader. And then we can give it any kind of Wikipedia page name and it's going to take all the information and make it available through our index. So here's an example I've got in here. And again, I'm trying to use some very recent data to prove that this is not just the GPT-3 underlying knowledge base, but we're actually giving it a custom knowledge base. So here we can see something called Cyclone Freddy, which has happened recently. 2023 Tropical Cyclone Freddy, longest lived tropical cyclone on record, blah, 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 blah. So this is obviously very recent information. And now we can take this over and try to get an index that we can ask it about this particular cyclone. This is very simple to do in typical Llama index fashion. All we need to do is instantiate this Wikipedia reader class. And then we have ability to load in pages by simply naming the page that we want, which in this case is Cyclone Freddy run the cell and as before we need to create an index using the documents we've created which are called wikidocs here run the cell again now the index is made and then all we need to do is query it as we have before in the same pattern so you load the documents you create the index and you can query the index same thing over and over and over again what countries were affected by cyclone freddy Cyclone Freddy affected Madagascar, Mozambique, and Zimbabwe, which is correct. Now, please note that I did have a few issues with the Wikipedia loader here. I'm not sure why, but it seems to insert and change characters depending on what you put in as a page name. So I had to play around a bit to get the Cyclone Freddy working, but this is just one example and I'm sure they'll fix it. Maybe it'd be better if they got you to put in the link to the page rather than the name, but I'm sure it'll be fixed soon enough. And now we get onto a bit more of a practical example. So this is a customer support bot that you're able to make by putting in your frequently asked questions, all sorts of stuff from your existing customer support resources, and then create an index so you can query and ask questions about your, your frequently asked questions. So I've gone to ASOS, I've headed to the customer support section, and I've gone into all of these different questions and answers that I've set up, and I've copied all of the information, and I've put it into just .txt files. So we have a bunch of different information here that we can then query. And as before, all we need to do is use a simple directory loader. And now I've put in the directory to this ASOS folder that I'm referencing here. And all I need to do is load the data into that document. And as before, we just need to run this GPT simple vector index, include our documents, and it's going to index all the information in those customer support little text files that I've got. And now I can ask it, what premier service options do I have in Saudi? In Saudi Arabia, you have the option of signing to the ASOS premier, which gives you free standard, da 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 da. And I can change this again in the UAE and it gives me the information regarding the UAE which I have in the documents here and yes it is that easy all you need to do is take your information put it in a folder tell it to load it and then you can start asking questions about it now I want to give you one more example of a data loader that is available through Llama Index which is a YouTube transcript loader so as we can see if we come over here and we find YouTube transcript this loader fetches the text transcript of YouTube videos using the YouTube transcript API Python package 
Very, very simple to uh, implement as you can see here. And over here I have the same thing. Now what I've done is taken a Dave Nick video, his complete YouTube automation tutorial for beginners, which I feel like is a fairly good use case. Say if you wanted to put a massive YouTube video on that, it's like a two hour course and you wanted to get some feedback and talk to essentially query the information within that course, you could put it in here and get a index created on it. So very simple to do. Again, you're just instantiating this YouTube transcript reader, putting in the URL as it says in the documentation for the YouTube transcript loader, run the cell and create our documents object, create the index, and so here I've asked it a question, what are some YouTube automation mistakes to avoid, which I mentioned in the video, there's a section on it, and it's able to tell me re-uploading people's content without permission and goes through a list of the things he mentioned in the video. Now with those examples out of the way, I know what you're thinking, this doesn't look like a chatbot to me. And you'd be right, this is not a chatbot, this is simply querying an index, we're able to send it one question and it sends us one answer back and there's no conversation history or context going on here. I couldn't find anything online on how to convert Llama Index's querying system into a chatbot, so I took it upon myself to figure this out myself, and I was able to create this chatbot class here, which is working very well, and you guys are gonna be able to copy and paste this over to your projects. In the description, I'm gonna have all the code so you can get access to it. Now, I don't wanna bore you with the technical side of things of this, but essentially, it creates a messages list, very similar to the ChatGPT API, which I wasn't able to get integrated into this, so I had to essentially do it myself. Now, while I assume the Llama Index team is still working on getting a ChatGPT API integration installed, we've essentially been able to create our own version of it here by using messages. Every time you send a message and a response, it's added to a messages list. And then every time you query it, it remembers those messages so that you can have some kind of context running through the chat. Now, all you need to instantiate this chatbot is to put in your API key and give it a index that you want to use. In this case, we're going to be using the Cyclone Freddy Wiki Index again and then you're able to start this up and start chatting to it. Now again, to make sure this is not using any other sources of information or it's existing knowledge, I'm going to be using an index that is based on the Llama article that we used in the very first example. So I've gone and run this chatbot, so now I can ask it, what is Llama? Llama is a state-of-the-art foundational large language model. Who created it? So I can say who created it and just say it, and it remembers what it had said previously. It knows that I'm referring to Llama and it responds with Meta created Llama large language model Meta AI. Now, while this does not look flashy because we're here in Jupyter Notebook, it does show you the ability to load your own custom data set in and teach these models something that they don't know. It gives them a new custom knowledge base and then not only query them in a, in a sort of single shot method, you can then query them and have a chat interface with them and go back and forth. It remembers the previous messages all using this code, which is going to be available in the description. So if you want to take all of this code and copy and paste it over to your own a custom knowledge base, then you can do that down below. Now, I really, really urge you guys to look at how you can apply this to businesses. With the ChatGPT API coming out, it has opened up so many doors. If you're able to load some kind of custom data into these models and create a chatbot like this, you can create a business overnight with this kind of technology. Now, please, after this video, don't just leave it here. Go to the Llama Hub and have a look at some of the data loaders that they have available. It will really open your eyes and just go through all of them. I had such a good time going through and understanding the different ways and different data types and sources that Llama Hub allows you to load into their Llama Index. Things like Slack, Discord, Google Calendar, Reddit, CSV files, all this sort of stuff can be loaded into these indexes and used for in your own chatbot. I'm going to be looking to do some cool YouTube videos for you guys on this, how you can create a quick application using some of these loaders. And myself and my development team have also been working with clients using this exact strategy already to create custom chatbots. So if you have a big idea and you want to talk to me about it, or you want to speak to me as a consultant, or you want my development team to build you out an entire application, an entire platform, then hit down below. The link is going to be available if you want to have a chat to me or get something built with me and my team. So thank you so much for watching guys, that is all for the video, but if you want to get this code, remember head down to the description, you can copy and paste it over to your own projects and get something like this spun up. And if you really enjoyed the video, please leave me a like, it helps my channel so much. Now if you like this kind of content, please subscribe as well and hit the bell so you know when I post my next one. But that's all for today, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.